Hey everybody, just a few weeks ago I finished an advanced mediation training seminar with Ken Cloak, one of the modern godfathers of mediation, who has a really different and a very deep take on what mediation is and how it can be used. So I want to make a series of videos about mediation from the Ken Cloak perspective, and this is number one, what is mediation? So for background, Ken Cloak is one of the most experienced mediators alive. I have done well over 5,000 mediations over the course of 43 years in over 25 countries. He's seen virtually every type of conflict imaginable from marital to workplace to national and even international. India, Pakistan, Ukraine many years ago, Cuba, Zimbabwe, China, long distance, shall we say, in a variety of different countries in Africa. Shall I keep going? And he's a world famous heavyweight bodybuilding champion. <laughs> Not exactly. The reason I want to start with this seemingly elementary topic is that every other treatment I've seen of it just barely scratches the surface. And with Ken's aid, I want to take us much, much deeper. So what is mediation? Mediation is a conflict resolution process that's both facilitated and collaborative. And if that meant absolutely nothing to you, great, it shouldn't. It's just a bunch of words. Lisa, I have some more context. A conflict resolution process is anything that helps us deal with conflict. And we're dealing with conflict all the time. But there's basically four resolution processes that we'll see a lot, and those are violence, law or litigation, negotiation and mediation. And so I'll just go through the differences between those because that'll help give us the context as to what exactly mediation is and why it's so important. Lisa, I have some more context. So the key distinction here is about power. Mediation and negotiation do not require power. They are not coercive. They are voluntary and collaborative, whereas violence and the legal system have some amount of coercion and power. The reason that's important is that any solution based on coercion or power is going to be fragile because it's going to depend on the balance of power, which everybody is always trying to change. In a violent situation, let's say we're in a separation. I'm really afraid of you coming back to the house for whatever reason. I say, if you ever come back to the house, I'm going to kill you. That's conflict resolution through, through violence. It might be effective as long as you believe that the threat is credible until, of course, you seek some way to disturb the balance of power by getting your own weapon or filing a suit against me or restraining order or whatever it is. So it's similar with the legal system. It's fundamentally coercive. This time the state is involved and hopefully it's a lot more fair in areas where fairness is even possible. But it's not something that could survive the change in a balance of power. And therefore, it's fundamentally fragile. So that's what we mean by collaborative as opposed to coercive. When we say facilitated, we just mean there's another person in the room. In the violent situation, if I didn't want to kill you myself, I'd hire an assassin and that would be a facilitated violent solution. Mediation is just a facilitated negotiated agreement. So it's totally voluntary. It depends on consensus. Both people have to agree. But there's someone in the room who's kind of the adult who's able to handle themselves. And that's, that's really critical to this process because if everybody were emotionally tuned in, aware of what they're feeling, aware of the information contained in their feelings, and not just responding directly to their impulses, we would not need mediators. But our reality is that we're in developmental preschool. Hence, mediation is very important. So the mediator's key training is to go below the bull of what the conflict appears to be about and actually get to the root of the matter. What the unmet needs are and the unexpressed desires that are going to lead to future conflicts and they're going to injure any potential agreement or solution because they haven't been addressed. And here's where it gets really deep and why mediation is not just alternative dispute resolution or a more cost effective way of getting to agreement, but actually a pretty significant developmental moment for our society. Because in order to get to a mediated agreement, which is not going to be enforced by balance of power, people have to understand one, what they really want, what they really need and two, what the other person is all about. And that, of course, is really challenging for people. Without an experienced mediator or a religious epiphany or some MDMA they took that morning, we'll go into exactly how that works a little later in the series, but I want to just give you a little taste right now because it's a beautiful process. What the mediator essentially has to do is create a roadmap. I call it an empathic roadmap that goes from hating the person to understanding them. And as you can imagine, there's a lot of small milestones in that roadmap I for sure am not going to take multiple of those little journeys without the other person also taking a few steps. 
So the mediator has to build this empathic roadmap and then invite reciprocity through getting one person to take the first step. Just a simple moment of understanding or acknowledgement or empathy or sort of aha about, oh, what was that like for you? And then the other person can be cultivated to do the same. And then there's this positive empathic upward spiral. And the idea is that each step softens the heart of the other person in order for them to take the next step, co-creating a virtuous cycle of empathy that eventually leads to understanding. And understanding is not agreement, but so much of what lies in the way of agreement is not in fact practical, but emotional. And so when we can resolve those tensions and meet those deeper needs, then all the barriers to coming up to practical agreement have been dealt with. And it's just a creative problem solving exercise, which we do all the time. So that's what mediation is really about. Mediation is an operation that we perform on conflict. It's not just an eight step process where two people get in a room, but it's actually a deeply transformative process where the people who come out of the room are not the people who went in. Which for me is the real reason why mediation is important and everybody should read every work that Ken Cloak has ever written, which is difficult because there's like 20 or 30 books. Mediation is the only conflict resolution process that requires personal transformation. And personal transformation or development or enlightenment or inner peace or world peace or spirituality or whatever you want to call it because they're all synonymous is the essential game we're playing here. And mediation is the one technique that points us directly towards that. <laughs> so we're new to YouTube and we would love your feedback. Please comment, subscribe, follow, tell all your friends and let us know what you think. Thanks. And remember, the only way out is through.